justice has not been served today. We as a devastated family have been let down by multiple agency failings and ineffectiveness. The CPS did not consult with us, as has been reported. Instead, we have been rushed, hastened and railroaded. The first meeting we had with them at our behest was Friday the 24th of November, a few short days before the pre-trial plea hearing on the 28th. For the record, they had suggested that we actually meet with them on that very morning, which we clearly thought wasn't enough time. We were presented with a fait accompli. That decision had been made to accept manslaughter charges. We were horrified. At no point during the previous five and a half months were we given any indication that this could conclude in anything other than murder. We trusted in our system, foolishly as it turns out. We do not dispute that the murderer is mentally unwell and has been for a number of years. However, the premeditated planning, the collection of lethal weapons, hiding in the shadows and that brutality of the tax are of an individual who knew exactly what he was doing. He knew entirely that it was wrong, but he did it anyway. This has been a trial by doctors. Why was there no mental health assessment during his time in custody? Why was it the first time he had any assessment in mid-July for the defence report only? Why did he not begin to receive treatment till mid-September? And why did he remain in prison until the 1st of November? Importantly, why did Dr Blackwood, instructed by the CPS in August, wait until the 14th of November to interview and assess him? So many questions. To Nottingham Police, we additionally have grave concerns regarding aspects of this investigation. Why were we repeatedly told through the summer that the offender was a sofa surfer and had no real abode? Not true, he did one that was registered in his name in Nottingham and one that he had been in for six months prior to his eviction on only the 11th of June last year. Why? It took repeated questioning from us to finally receive an answer late last Friday afternoon to the question of his outstanding warrant issued September 2022 for a vicious attack on a police officer, such a violent assault that he was tasered. To the Assistant Chief Constable, Rob Griffin, who finally released this information publicly yesterday, I say this. You have blood on your hands. If you had just done your jobs properly, there's a very good chance my beautiful boy would be alive today. There is so much more to say and clearly serious questions regarding this case and events leading up to this monster being out in society. But for today, our darling son, his dear friend Grace, and a wonderfully kind grandfather, Ian, have been stolen from us forever and let down by the very system that should have been protecting them. My heart from the very beginning has gone out to the families of Grace and Barnaby. It will continue to go out to them as we all now share an anniversary every June that will never be celebrated. They are the definition of strength and unity. My, also, my heart also goes out to Wayne Burkett, Marcin Goronsky and Sharon Miller, victims that have also been evicted by this heinous crime. The letter of the law was once considered the most important rule to live and abide by, put upon us to make the country a fair and safer place. Now they're just a cautionary tale where the calculated, cold, brutal killing spree can be reduced down to something that falls within the same sentencing restrictions and guidelines as that of death by dangerous driving. If this man was not stopped when he was, this could have been one of the most catastrophic of ca attacks this country had ever seen. This man is a killer. Murder was the only thing he cared about, and he fulfilled this in horrific fashion on Tuesday the 13th of June last year. My family has suffered a great loss. The children who my father had a positive impression on have suffered a great loss. The city of Nottingham has suffered a great loss. The fails from the police, the CPS, the health service, have resulted in the murder of my father and these two innocent students. The NHS Mental Health Trust have to be held accountable for their failures along with the police. All we can do is hope that in due course some sort of justice will be served. This man has made a mockery of the system and he has got away with murder. We will never come to terms with the loss of our beloved daughter, Grace, and how she lost her life. Her heroic actions, she was a gift to us, and she was a gift to the country. We 
like to thank our wonderful family from London and Ireland and all of our friends for their continued love and support. Whilst we have never questioned this man's diagnosis, the lack of toxicology, contemporaneous mental health assessment, as well as missed opportunities to divert his lethal path will forever play on our minds. And this requires further review. We will look for answers regarding missed opportunities to intervene and prevent this horrendous crime. Thank you. Sanjoy, what happens now? Um, I think we all regroup. We've been through absolute hell for the last few days. And exactly as Emma said, we regroup and we find a path going forwards. Were you told you couldn't insist on a prosecution for murder? Were you told that that, that, that wasn't possible? Um, I'd rather not speculate at this time. As I said, we need to regroup and we're very happy to speak to the people once we have, and we have, we've been through a lot. Sure. Once we have our thoughts together, we're very happy to come back and, and speak to the press. Can, can I just ask, will you consider um, requesting some kind of inquiry? We need to make we, we, that decision. To. And as I think Sandra has said, and I'm sure you've heard yeah. the same, we need some time to decompress. But I would like to thank the media for your support, because I know that our voices have been contained until now. But thank you, because you're here and you're telling our children's and dad's stories.